Hello and welcome to the Keep It Local Maine podcast where we tell the stories of local business owners and Maine residents and learn more about what they do, who and what inspires them, their challenges, successes, and more. My name is Todd Regalinski. And I am Kimberly Regalinski. And we are the publishers of Keep It Local Maine, a local magazine that helps showcase local businesses to the people in and around their communities. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly podcast that you can subscribe to on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. You can learn more about us at keepitlocalmaine.com and follow us on on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram through the links in the show notes. This episode is sponsored by Fabian Oil, a family-owned and operated business that offers heating oil and propane delivery services and repairs. Fabian has been serving Central and Northern Maine with propane and oil for over 30 years. As a local Maine business, they cherish the relationships they have formed by serving the people of their communities. In 2019, Fabian entered the Southern Maine region with a heating oil acquisition, and they have recently brought propane to the market. They are aggressive and would love to be your supplier. Give them a call at 207-793-2044 or visit fabianoil.com. In this episode, we'll be talking with Lakosha Evans, the owner of Classically Cute Designs Kids Clothing and Accessories Boutique in Biddeford, Maine. Lakosha provides access to great private brand clothing for kids and outstanding customer service through Classically Cute Designs Kids Clothing and Accessories Boutique. She is also a military spouse of 19 years with four amazing children. After years of moving around and the starting and quitting of many jobs, she finally decided it was time to start her own business and Classically Cute is the result. Welcome to the show, Lakosha. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. This is exciting. Great. So I I absolutely love your shop, um, and I'm so excited that we get to tell people about it. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about your boutique and what truly just makes it unique? Okay, so my boutique is Classically Cute Designs, Kids Clothing and Accessories. Mm-hmm. All of the clothing that we carry is more unique in style. So most of our brands that we carry, they are small and up and coming brands that mm-hmm. I retail for. Mm-hmm. Um, and these brands, they they only allow a certain number of runs, I would say. Mm-hmm. So they, they call them runs. They allow mm-hmm. for a certain number of runs of each particular piece. Mm-hmm. Once the piece is out in the world, they don't make it again. So that's oh, wow. where that unique factor comes from. They're yeah. very limited in number. Mm-hmm. Um, and for my boutique, I wanted something that was different, something that's mm-hmm. not run of the mill, uh, that you yeah. can't just go to like your Walmart or Target or other large retailer to purchase. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reasoning behind that, it sort of stemmed from my twin girls. Um, mm-hmm. They being twins and and dressing alike Mm -hmm. quite often. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, you know, it's okay for them to dress, you know, alike from time to time. But if they were to see someone else with the same clothing, they, they feel some type of way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, we actually experienced that (laughs) a couple years back. And that's what sort of got me thinking, what can I do to, have a brand or start to to create a brand um, for myself where the the style of clothing can be more unique. Yeah. And I thought about them. I kept them in mind during this process. So uh, needless to say, last year, uh, we are now officially, we have now officially been in business for one year. Oh, wow. So yes, we started off, we launched online, launched a boutique online and one year later, we are still here and we now have a storefront and all is well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And your clothing, <laughs> it is, it is so unique. And it's one of the things that I like about it too, is the material, it's quality and it's soft. Like it's very soft to touch. I noticed because I bought a piece for my daughter and the, it's just comfortable. It's comfortable and soft. It really is. That's actually one of my favorites. So that's, I, I carry a few different brands. My favorite brand is called Pete and Lucy. Mm -hmm. 
they are a family owned designer. They design all of the clothing in house. Oh, wow. They're the ones who came up with like sort of that, like the, the softness of the material, like mm-hmm. all, all that you, you witness with them. It is truly amazing. And I am proud to be one of the few retailers. Um, I, I am the only retailer for them here in the state of Maine. So that, oh, wow. yes, it makes it even That's more great. unique. So yeah. usually the only way someone's going to going to get some Pete and Lucy is if they know someone out of state or if they'd buy it directly from me. So it's really yeah. awesome. They are an amazing brand um, and I am proud to carry them. So I, uh, I'm glad that you love the clothing um, and I, I find that it. my Mainers love to touch and feel. And once yes. people get a, um, <laughs> an idea of the clothing and the styles and, you know, the materials, the quality, people are just blown away. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because we're I love good quality. Absolutely. Yes. Well, being here in Maine, you got to make sure that stuff is pretty rugged. It's got to be you gotta hold up to it. You know, it's got to be got to be steady. Oh, my gosh. You did the Maine accent. I, I can't believe you did it. You know what? I'm 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 not from here, so I didn't inherit it. So I just I love it so much. You I do really do a good do. job at that, though. You actually do. You I, really I, did. I, I, I try. Thank you. Uh, I, one quick question I have a follow up about that is yes. how do you find these brands? To be honest, I, I, I don't. Okay, what's a good way to say this? <laughs> I'm like a Google queen. I Google uh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> research. And I research. research yeah. and <laughs> um, so honestly, they were, they were the, the brand that really launched me um, mm. and my boutique. Mm-hmm. Uh, I literally, by just sort of Googling some different ideas of what I wanted to carry, like the style of clothing, I came across Pete and Lucy and it just, I said, you know what? I'll give this a try. I'll order a few things. I'm not going to order a lot. Mm -hmm. And I want to get a feel for, because I'm very, very particular Mm -hmm. (laughs) with with clothing. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to order something that I wouldn't put on my own children. So I said, Mm -hmm. you know what? I'll Mm. get a feel for the clothing. I ordered it, got in some clothing and I was just blown away. I just, I said, oh my gosh, it's, It's super soft and their clothing is made with 97% cotton, 3% spandex. Wow! It is Mm. like the perfect blend and it retains its color very, very well. Um, And it holds up very well, especially if you have very rambunctious kiddos. It Mm -hmm. it holds Mm -hmm. up really well, which is was so amazing to me. Um, That's great. I've spent, you know, tons of money on clothing for my kids over the years and even some of the highest priced brands that are out there, Mm -hmm. the quality just isn't always there and it doesn't always hold up or retain the color that you'd like. So to actually see a brand where it's very cost effective and affordable Mm -hmm. to be able to hold up to some of these higher end brands is amazing. Yeah, Mm. that's great. Yeah. So when was that aha sort of moment when you knew, okay, I think I've got a business here. What, was it sort of that that moment when you when you saw you know the the other child wearing something that your children are wearing, or was it a little bit further down the line when you were sort of like, oh wait a minute? Was it a passion? Or- and, and and what was there? It was a different moment than that, or or was it that moment for you? So yes, you you mentioned the other child having on this. It was it was so ironic. We were out at like a school function for my girls and. Mm-hmm. They had on similar outfits. It, it wasn't mm-hmm. exactly the same. This was the day they decided, no, we don't want to dress alike, mom. We want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can have similar, you know, similar style, but we want our own thing today. So yeah. I said, okay, that's, that's that's good. But when we get to the school function, my the oldest twin, uh, her name is Kendall. Her eyes grew big. They grew very large, and I'm like, what is she looking at? And I look over. She's like, mommy. <laughs> she has the same thing and she's like I don't like it and she threw a fit she was not happy she wanted to go home we could say we as women we do have that it is it is one of those things that you go somewhere if you see someone with the same exact dress or same I know exact, oh. it, it's very bothersome because then you start to question well do I look good at it she looks fantastic at it you know <laughs> <laughs> There's so much that goes through your head when you see someone with the same outfit. So my thought process was, 
oh my gosh, does this start at this age where they start to <laughs> wonder? I said, oh my gosh, she was like really heartbroken that day. She did not want to stay at the function. She literally, she's like, I want to go home. I don't like it. She said, it's okay for Cassie. So the other twin is Cassidy. <laughs> she's like, it's okay for her to dress like me, but I don't want the other girl to dress like me. <laughs> And I said, okay, so this is not going to work. So I said, what can I do in the future to prevent something like this from happening? And I said, well, that's really hard yeah. because you go to Walmart, you go to Target, you go mm. to Children's Place. Mm. And these are great. They carry great brands, but they print such, they manufacture such large quantities. Right. So. It is, a, you know, you have a higher percentage of chance to see someone in the house. same, <laughs> same right. thing. So I said, you know what? That was the moment where I said, maybe I need to look at finding a way to get them more unique clothing. Yeah, that's mm. cool. And being a military spouse, so we're a military family. We've moved, we've pretty much lived on in just about every region of the United States. Um, mm. And you know, as a military spouse and, and the constant moves and me continuously having to shift my plans with my career, I said, you know what, this is the time, mm. you know, we're 19 years in this journey <laughs> with the military. I said, it's time that I start to look to have something for myself mm. and start to create a legacy or something for my children. Mm. And that was sort of the, the, what prompted me to start researching brands. I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I have children. They're my little fashion divas. What's a way that I can use them to help me with this, this thought process to help me sort of hone in on what it is that I would like to carry, mm -hmm. you know, for a boutique. And it literally was just going to be an online thing. I mm -hmm. said, you know, what? we'll just keep it online. You know, we'll keep it simple. And they help out with the process. They help me pick out the things that That's they so like, that yeah. they feel that other kiddos their ages would like. So it mm -hmm. makes it fun. We yeah. make it a fun thing for them. To, they feel important. They feel that they have mm -hmm. a, a, mm -hmm. a place in the business. But it was really them. They were the ones yeah. that sort of prompted me to think outside of the box and look at offering something similar to what I would like, a style. and. Yeah you find that a lot of parents honestly have sort of the same thought process. Mm. They're like, oh my yeah. gosh, you know, these are excellent brands elsewhere, but you know, sometimes it gets a little frustrating when you see <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. the same thing running around parks. You're like, oh my gosh, that kid has on the exact same thing. You know, yeah. so it's a lot of parents I find are in the same position I'm in. Yeah. yeah, it's so cool. And first of all, I just need to say thank you for your service. Thank you to your family for mm -hmm. your service, um, because I, I recognize and we know that it is a family affair when you serve in the military. So you guys have sacrificed, you know, for our country. And I just I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so thank just you. thank you. Thank you so much for that. So as a as a military family, I imagine, you know, like you said, you you've traveled a lot, right? How do you think those experiences have it really kind of shaped you as an entrepreneur, as a business owner? How has um, being involved in the military, how would you say that's been kind of a plus in 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 launching a business? So as a, as a military family and sort of having exposure to, you know, different cultures, different backgrounds, you meet people from all walks of life mm. and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um I have loved, I'm not, okay, initially I didn't love it, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's starting off, I take that back. I didn't love it initially, but it grew on me after a few years. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like one of those once in a lifetime opportunities to like sort of see the world. Um, but as an entrepreneur, to have a business, to have something that I won't have to stress about if... <laughs> mm -hmm. We are hoping this would be home, but mm -hmm. if his my husband's position or his his role, his duty to his country says we need you here, it is you know which would be another location. If mm -hmm. that were to happen, it's always good to know that to be an entrepreneur, I can pick up mm. and take my business wherever mm -hmm. it is that we go. 
That's awesome. Mm. And that's what I find to be important. And I hate that it took me so long to figure that out. Mm. Um, it was fear, you know, initially it was, it was a mm-hmm. fear thing. I, I feared, you know, starting a business and failing, but after speaking with many mentors over the years and looking, you know, my children in the face, I said, you know what? I can't live in fear. I, I just mm. have to go for it. Yeah. And to fail is, as I once saw on a board, Yeah. failure is the first attempt in learning. Yeah. Mm. So sure. I looked at that and said, you know what? I can't fail. I won't fail. And I am determined not to fail. So I have no choice but to press forward mm. and do what I need to do to keep my business thriving. Um, awesome. So I do pride myself as a as a small business owner in making sure that I, I give my customers what it is that they need um, mm-hmm. and what they look for, that they have a welcoming environment when they come into our store mm-hmm. or order from us online to feel that we are very connected. We are here to mm-hmm. serve them. That's mm-hmm. great. You know what I love, too? Uh, just something you were saying earlier, too, is I love that you're including your girls in this in this whole process, because you're you're really giving them a voice. And I think it's so important for us as mothers to give our children a voice to to let them know that it's okay to use their voice, right? Whatever it is. And and just the fact that you're including them in that is they get to have a voice in what you're doing. And that's huge. That's got to be empowering for them. Honestly, I think it is. Yeah, Mm. they feel important. (laughs) They feel like they have a say. Although sometimes it can, you know, it, it, I think it's it can be maybe a little overwhelming for them because <laughs> everything that we look at, that I look at ordering, they mm-hmm. they love everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, for sometimes it can be hard to narrow down. I'm like, I'm not sure mm-hmm. we need every print like that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think we need all of that. And they're like, but no, mommy, because you may have a girl that may really, really like this. Or you mm-hmm. may have a little boy that really, really likes this. Like, we really have to get yeah. this all. <laughs> Like, well. <laughs> so we'll work on that piece of it. But yeah. no, it's it is it is really good. I I do think that it really does empower them um, yeah. as as young women. Um yes. you know, young young ladies growing up yes. in, in, in this world. So yeah. I am hoping that if we start this empowerment from a young age that it continues as they get yes. older. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Kind of going along in that same vein, I mean, what are some of the most rewarding parts about being a business owner for you and your family? I think you've already go- gone over a couple of them. What are some of the others? What are some of the kind of the benefits of this, I guess? Honestly, the, the benefit is it's it's mine. It's, mm. you know, for for the longest time, I've, I've wanted something for myself, like to feel mm-hmm. that that I'm responsible, not, you know, raising kids. Yes. You're responsible for Mm -hmm. them. And Mm -hmm. definitely those, those are, they're my heart. Um, Mm -hmm. but to have a business to, to know that it's, it's your own business Mm -hmm. that you are solely, you know, responsible for that business. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know that for me, that has just been it. It's, it's mine. And it's, I don't have to answer to anyone, if mm-hmm. that makes sense, other than oh, maybe my yeah. eight-year-old twins. But, you know. <laughs> but no, it's it's seriously, it's it's. I don't have to answer to anyone. It is my business, and I can do what I want with it when I want. It. So that is that is what I love the most is yeah. having that. It's you know what it is because I can, I can relate to that and and for and it sounds like it's similar. Is you have creative reign. Like if you, you get to create this beautiful thing and you don't have anyone telling you, no, you can't do it this way. No, you can't create it this way. You get that freedom to create, um, completely freely. And it's just, it's so empowering. And very, very true. Um, Mm -hmm. I love to have, I feel that to a certain extent, I can be a very creative person Mm -hmm. and, I have full authority to make changes that I see fit for my business. And that is ultimately what I love. You know, I love Mm. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when you when you're working a a job, a lot of times you don't necessarily have that true creative Mm reign to do what you want when you want. You you have to answer to someone else. And in this case, Mm. my business, I answer to no one. Right. Yeah. I think it it comes down to a bit of there's so many elements once you 
I'm going to use my qu- air quotes here, grow up, because I'm, I'm still trying to decide how I want to grow up. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's just me. But as you kind of grow up and you have more responsibilities and all those things, and it's either answering to somebody in you know who you, you either work for or you're answering to somebody who you're partnering with. Yes. And in, in marriage, you always have to consider you know, who you're with or, you know, if, and, and something like either being in business or I could even see like being a military family, it's kind of the same thing. Like you're in it together. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and Mm -hmm. you have to always consider, you know, that it's a together thing and to have those, to have something that is yours Mm. that you can just, like you say, you have, you and Kim had just said, like you have creative freedom. You can do what you want. It helps to retain a little bit of who you are. Mm. Yes in amongst all of the us yeah. it's like okay where's where's me in in all of the us and we stuff yeah yes and i know that's been a huge sanity piece for me through the years you know i mean we're in business together and right. you know family and all that and having little things i can just be like okay i'm just going to go over in the corner and do my thing for a little while <laughs> and remember who i am yes. aside from us so that when i come right. back i'm actually like hey i'm you know, vaguely sane and, and prepared to deal with all of the us stuff. <laughs> yes. yeah. I, I, I love how you put that. I agree that having something for yourself. Yes. A marriage is a partnership. Any relationship that you have with anyone, mm. um, no mm-hmm. matter the level of the relationship, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's work that you have to put into that. You know, there's, you know, you have to consider the, the, the thoughts and feelings of those individuals that you have that relationship with, whether it's a friendship or, you know, um, some sort of platonic friendship, whatever that may look like for you. For me, my husband is, he's my partner and we've, we've been together a total of 21 years and. Oh, wow. Yes. (laughs) So it's, he and he's he's literally although he's semi involved with you know helping out as as needed but ultimately he's like this is your business you mm-hmm. do what you want to do with your business awesome. you know i try to include him like hey what do you think about this and he's like i don't really care that's your thing i'm not <laughs> he's like i don't want to impose on your business this is something for you you know to really put yourself into because over the mm-hmm. years you can feel lost and yeah. begin to feel like you're losing bits and pieces of yourself. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it has felt like that over the years where he's always had his career. He's always had those moments where he's been able to like really do what he's loved. Mm-hmm. And, you know, being a wife and a mother, it's always been a struggle to properly balance that or to really mm-hmm. feel as though that I've been able to sort of remember who I am as an individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to have this business helps me and reminds me of my individuality. I love what you're saying because it is true. And you're totally right. It is true across all relationships from, mm-hmm. you know, friendships all the way up to, to every relationship you have. And in some cases, it's OK for one person to to be supporting the other person's dream. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And Very and. Much. But there is there always has to be a some sort sort of balance to that, mm-hmm. where okay I'm I'm giving out it's almost like you know one of my one of my favorite sayings is you know no input no output as far as creatively you know Joe Strummer from the the Clash said that and it's the same sort of thing in those things like you can support someone else's dream but at some point you have to be feeding your own dreams and mm-hmm. and and creativity mm-hmm. and and self as well. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to dry up trying to, you know, do everything for everyone else. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And it's great that you have this to to be able to to do that and to do it in such a in such a great way. And to also, you know, be able to say, hey, if, if we have to move to wherever. All right. To pivot. Yeah. I can I can do that. That's yeah. fantastic. Yes. That's great. So we always I always like to ask this because it just uh, it's it's such a I always want to know. But who or what inspires you? This is probably very cliche, but my children, Mm -hmm. (laughs) they're the ones who inspire me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I say that because they all I have. So I have four, four children, not just my twins. I know I've been speaking a lot about my (laughs) twins, Um, Mm -hmm. but I have, you know, two older boys, a 16 year old and a 13 year old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just watching them grow all four of my children watching them grow over the years and 
learning them and learning who they are as little individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all have great qualities about them that I really Mm -hmm. admire. And, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, you know, as, as we grow and, and as Todd said, I'm still growing up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I am still growing up myself. And when I was younger, I felt that I had so many people I could tell you that inspired me when I was younger. Like, oh my gosh, this person inspires me because of this. This person inspires me because of that. But looking at my children and and watching them and watching how they adapt and they are constantly, they pivot even more than I do Mm -hmm. with this lifestyle that we live as a military family. And they never cease to amaze me. And they are what, they are the people, the little people that inspire me to do better, to do Mm. all that I can so that they know that mom did all that she could to get us where we are and Mm. that they can continue that journey knowing not to give up on their dreams. Mm. So we, we talk about as a family, we, we talk about that a lot. Like, you know, what's your dreams? What, what do you want to do when you get older? You know, what really then they'll tell you, mom, you inspire us. Dad inspires us. But it's awesome. Little do they know. I'm like, no, they're they're the inspiration. And I I would say, you know, if this question was asked of me before having children, it would have been mm-hmm. different yeah. at the time. But no, as of now, my my children, they are my inspiration. Yeah. They are what ultimately keeps me going and keeps me on my toes. Like, yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, they'll ask absolutely. certain questions and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I didn't really think about it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, they're yeah. little minds. Like we don't give children enough credit because we For assume sure. that they're young. They're not wise enough to really understand a lot of what happens in the world around them. But they do. They understand they more do. than we give them credit for. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So they inspire me every day. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how much we can learn from our kids, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it's it's much. they are wisdom. Um, there's so much wisdom in in our kids, and we can we can truly learn so much from them. It's very true, and you know they see the world differently than what mm-hmm. we as we get because you know society grooms us. You know mm-hmm. they groom us to be a certain way, but when you're young, you mm-hmm. have a completely different outlook mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. life, on the world in general. Mm. And I love that because they yeah. point out things that, you know, when you cause sometimes, you know, as a parent, you you're like, oh, my God, why did you do that? What were you thinking? And, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, it's like, why on earth would you do that? And it's like, you know, your thought process is I would have never done that. But I have to remember and recall they are not me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. They are not me and they really have to live and learn from their own mistakes too. So it's like yes. I have to take a step back, but it's good that they remind me of that. Like, mom, yeah, you sure you never did something like this? Are you sure you <laughs> never said something like this? And I'm like, No, I I would have never maybe I did, did I? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't social media back then. Thanks. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, it is a different no world. <laughs> yes. For sure. Oh, gosh. If we had social media back then, I, I'm i not sure a lot of us would maybe be where we are because <laughs> no. So, no. social no. media, I, can no. it can really be a downer yeah. at times. It is yeah. such a positive on certain fronts. But yeah. there are other times when you're like, oh, my gosh, it's so much like negativity at times or it's such sad news stories or just things that you're just like oh my goodness I'm thankful we grew up the way we did I'm thankful oh me too I am (laughs) I am very very grateful for the way that I grew up (laughs) there would have been so much video of me doing stupid things just oh it would have been unreal (laughs) On the other hand, I might have made some money off of it. As <laughs> well, you know what? You know what, Todd? I I, I agree. I, I I probably could have made some money off of some of the things that I did, and it. it I was one of those. I was a very clumsy person growing up. Very very yep, clumsy me too. person. Me so too. I would have That's been Todd. that person where someone would have caught me, or they would have been filming me. Like, oh gosh, look at her. She just tripped over air. Like it's. Yep. <laughs> Because after a while, people anticipate it. They can see it coming like, oh, watch this, watch this, yes, watch she, this, watch Yes, this. that, that would have been me. Yes, I am, that, I am that individual that you'd look at and anticipate. Yep, she's going to hit the deck. 
Yeah, there yeah. it goes. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Never disappoints. Uh, well, so and, uh, one of the questions we like to kind of bring this back to at the end is, and especially this is going to be unique because you've you've lived in a bunch of different places. What is your favorite part of living in Maine? You know what? Okay, so this is, it's a hard question for me. And I say that because mm. we moved here last year in March during the height of COVID. Oh, wow. Yes, but as you know, the military and their missions that they have, they don't care about anything else that's going on, so to speak. What mm-hmm. matters is the mission. And they needed my husband here. And we're like, oh, gosh, you're going to move us during the midst of all of this? Like, should they do that? Is that right? Is it okay? <laughs> What's this going to look like? Would it put us all at risk? Like, it was so scary. Um, <sighs> but we understood. It's just one of those things where, like, you know what? We'll just make sure to pack extra sanitizer, extra <laughs> <laughs> disinfecting wipes. Like, we'll make sure to, you know, pack lunches whenever possible, stop and get drinks whenever we can, so that we're not, you know, having to expose our family. Mm -hmm. so much to the things around us you know i would like it was so bad i carried around lysol spray too so i would like i would would walk through lysol as before i get back in the car (laughs) because we we drove from texas to maine and needless to say we got a lot of dirty looks on the way uh, because (laughs) (laughs) folks were just looking like what on earth are they doing like why uh-huh. are they out? You know, like we're, yeah. we're moving with all this stuff, pulling, yeah. you know, pulling another vehicle and, and stuff with us. So it was very, it was very interesting. Yeah. So we did not get the opportunity to see Maine the way that we wanted to last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now that we are coming out of, or hopefully we're we're nearing the end of a pandemic, I am so excited to get to see what Maine has to offer, like in its entirety. We got a chance to drive around, but, you know, stay put in your cars and, you know, drive around to sort of see a little bit of the sights, but everything was shut down. Like it was like we were on in shutdown mode at the time. And that was such a bummer for me last year and for the, for my family as well. So we have literally just, just a little bit so far this year on those warm days yeah. We're like, let's get in the car and start driving. Let's see where we can go. That's but great. Maine has a lot of hidden culture here. Yeah. And I just, I can't wait to get that opportunity to be able to see more of that. That's great. Um, I also love the fact that it is clean here, like the air. Um, mm. <laughs> yes, it is cleaner air here. Um, we have lived in on the West Coast in, in California and it's so much smog. Yeah. You never know how something, how, how much fresh air, like what that really means until you've yeah. been somewhere where they have smog issues and wow. you start to learn the difference with what is truly fresh air and what is not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Maine has a lot of that. And I love, I love the community feel. Uh, people come together. Um mm to support one another. It is just, it is truly amazing. And honestly, thinking of all the places my family has lived over the years, I think there was maybe one other place where we had a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, we hadn't had that, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, Maine has that sense of community. We feel welcomed. We, it's been, it's been amazing. And it's so beautiful. It, it yeah. really is so yeah. much greenery and, you know, being so close to the water, like so close to the ocean. It's love it. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. This has yes, been definitely. awesome. Um, we're so glad that you're able to be on the show and tell us about your business. Um, people need to go in and check out Lakosha's boutique. It is absolutely fantastic, fabulous. It's a great place to buy kids' clothing you know, gifts for someone that just had a baby. Mm-hmm. School shopping. Yes. School shopping, school shopping, school shopping. Well, hang on. Let's let's get one school year over first. <laughs> I mean, hang on. Let's, let's slow well, down. We're going to be talking about I Christmas know, now I next. Know. Hang I, on. It's just crazy. It goes I just got fast. whiplash. <laughs> I, I was not expecting that one. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the back to school pitch in May. All right. I'm already there. I can't believe it. I'm already there. Oh, yes, she's goodness. thinking ahead. Wow. 
But yes, definitely. Thank you, Lakosha, for sharing your story with us. Yes. And I'll be sure that I, I have uh, links to all of your social media pages as yes. well as uh, the store and the location and all of that uh, okay. in the show notes for people to visit and to check out and to, to follow you on social media. Yes. Um, and so thank you very much again for, for yes. sharing with us. And we wish you great success in the in the coming years. And uh, please get out and enjoy Maine yes. this summer. So um, many great places. And can you tell us, what is your husband's name? My husband's name is Cecil. Cecil, thank you for your service, sir. We just thank you. Um, we just want to say mm -hmm. that. So, well, thank you so yes. much. Thank you, thank you both. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Kim, for having me on the show. This has been a, a pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's been thank our pleasure again. too. And have a great, uh, great summer. You do the same, and hope to see you soon. Thank you again to our sponsor, Fabian Oil. Be sure to contact them for all your propane and heating oil needs using the information in the show notes. And thank you for listening. Thank you.